Hello everyone. Uh, today we're looking at a HP 940 or more specifically the HP uh, C4900A printhead. Um, the reason we're looking at this today is because this printhead seems to be extremely clogged and is not giving satisfactory results by just the print head or the head cleaning that HP programmed into the printer. I've been soaking it in some printhead solution overnight and it still is not providing the necessary ink to print pretty much anything. So we're going to take it apart and examine and see exactly what's wrong. For this procedure you'll need the print head obviously and either neater nose pliers or a flathead screwdriver or something of the sort that you can pry against the print head with that is long enough to get enough leverage. Before you begin I would also recommend uh, putting a cloth down or paper towels down they can either throw away or wash um, because this procedure can get kind of messy because there's ink actually physically stored inside the print head. Um, so once we get in there, it will get kind of messy. You can also wear um, latex gloves to, so you don't get ink on your hands and have to deal with washing all that off and just throw the gloves away. Well, first of all, you're going to take your needle nose pliers or your flathead screwdriver whatever object you're using and stick it in that little itty bitty gap right there and from this angle with the print head upside down this front piece where the feed lines come in pops off and you're going to pry on it to pop it up I had to put the camera down because this takes uh, two hands and some precautions here there are two small BBs in each one of these holes right here. Once we take this off, there will be two small BBs down in here that will be exposed. And make sure you do not lose those BBs. Because I actually took them out already. <clears throat> there they are. I actually have three. Because I ordered some extras. Um, because the print head will not work correctly if you lose them and don't put them back in. So I have um, them sealed up here and some, a piece of tape so I don't lose them. So in order to get those out and to get inside the print head here, you can take your flathead screwdriver or your needless pliers here, stick it right into that hole, and pry upward. It might be kind of tough if this is the first time you're doing it. Uh, okay, there we go. And this just pops straight up. It's got a little groove there it slides on. And normally, the BBs would be down inside those two holes. Each, they're one in each. So make sure you don't lose those. You can either take them out and seal them inside a piece of tape like I did. Or what I also saw online is you can take a piece of tape rip it here take a piece of tape here and put it across the two holes and just seal them inside the hole that way you don't have to worry about ink coming out or losing them when you're trying to take them out now once you have the uh, tubes here off this piece off that the uh, feed tubes go to or plug in you can then uh, flip your cart or your print head back over so it's normal up and down. I put on a stopper here because without this part on air is allowed to flow in so there's no suction so if you don't have one of these and you flip it over the ink will just drip right out so make sure you do have something or, ink or the stopper here to prevent that you will have to flip it over because the next piece we're taking off is this top piece. This top separates from the main body here. And the way that we separate those two is simply pull them apart. 
So, and you want to make sure that you do that with the print head like this because all of this in here, there's two cavities in here. One is filled with each color because there's two colors per head. So one has, and this one has black and one has yellow. But there's a lot of ink in here, so if you don't want to spill that, make sure you have it straight up and down. And the way you take this off is you just hold, gra uh, hold the uh, body here and you just you have your snaps there. That's all right. Uh, just pull very gently and without spilling any of the ink, it's separate. If you can see it there, separate. One piece of equipment that I forgot to mention that you'll need at the beginning is this uh, a syringe with a needle to draw out the ink from the two compartments in the ink head. You could just wash it out and throw away the ink, uh, but there's a lot of ink in there and you will need ink to refill these once you have them all cleaned out. So it's probably better if you just go ahead and save whatever ink is in there. But you just do that with a, a syringe here with a needle and you just pull it out and put it in some containers to reuse it later. I already pulled the ink out of here. So as before, we just pull this right out. And the ink, I already pulled out all the ink. Let's see this in here. One, this one right here is yellow. And this one right here is black. And see the divider right there, yeah. This one's yellow and this one's black. They were full about three quarters of the way after, before I pulled all the ink out. This top part, when you pull it out, will also be covered in ink. Um, I just washed it off because there's no really point in saving that ink on here. But then again, make sure that you're, if you didn't take out these BBs, that your tape is still on here. Because you do not want to lose those BBs. Um, so that's the inside of the print head where the ink uh, reservoir is. And then once again, if you don't have a stopper here, your ink will just drain out. So if you don't have one of these, be prepared to make a mess because it will definitely get messy. So then after you get this, all the ink out that you want to get out and everything cleaned up, you can rinse this out with hot water. Uh, I've had no problems with using hot water, even getting it on the contacts or in the print head. Um, I actually have submerged these in water and have had no problem fixing them or uh, with them working again. Just dry them off before you stick them back in. Uh, I've also ran um, rubbing alcohol through them, just pure rubbing alcohol. Well, as pure as you can get, I think 91%. Just filling up each one of these things, putting it over a cup, and just letting them drain, just let it drip out down here to uh, clean all that ink out of there. This also helps break down the ink that may be clogging their print head up in here. Um, I've tried this and I still have not got the print quality that I would like. So we're going to go even closer and examine the print head. It's this where the uh, the jets are itself, and see if there's a electrical issue where the the contacts are not allowing the ink to flow, or the jets are not allowing, or jet, jet, the jets are not producing enough heat because this is a thermal print head. They have to produce heat in order to expand the ink. To shoot it out the ink head or what is going on there if it's a, a clogged issue if it's a mechanical issue or whatever it is so if you're like me and you've uh, done the solution through the print head cleaner or rubbing alcohol or just warm water through and still hasn't given it's still not giving you satisfactory uh, printings then you could also do this. You can physically examine up close and see the quality of the print head and the, the jets itself. You For this, you will need 
a flashlight, preferably an LED because they're really, really bright. Uh, the standard, oops, standard flashlights don't get bright enough for this. Some black electrical tape or duct tape might work because you need something to black out the light. We're going to restrict the light flow because this light is too much light. And I have a microscope here that really helps to look up close. And actually, if you have one that has a, this one has a, a 40, a 4, and a 10 times, all you need to do is take off one of these lenses. You don't need the whole microscope. So if you can just buy a lens online, a magnifying glass won't get close enough. I think a magnifying glass only does two to three times. You're going to need at least ten times. But you don't need the whole microscope. You just need a lens here that is uh, ten times. So for the next step of this, you pretty much take your flashlight, your LED flashlight, and take uh, your electrical tape. Rip off two pieces of electrical tape or whatever tape you're using. And you're going to cover up the majority of this light. We just want one slither of light in order to examine inside those print jets. So what I do is I just take the tape here, and it's kind of hard to do one-handed, and just tape it over the light here. I'm going to need my other hand to do the other side. Okay, so here's the half the flashlight. So that's how much light we're cutting out so far. And for the rest of it, oops, we want to cover up just, leave just enough. You can probably that's too much. Make sure it's tight too so we can, ah, there we go. So we got just a small slither of light coming through. And I would actually say the smaller the better because it's, we are trying to get that light into those little slits right there. They'll look kind of rainbowed right, right now. But into those little slits to see if the jets are clogged. To physically see the jets and see if they're clogged. If there's anything in there still clogging them up or anything. If there isn't, then there is something else wrong. It's the cleaning it and everything won't do anything else. Probably replace the print head. Which these print heads from HP run about 60 to $75. So doing this would definitely save you some money if it's just a clogged print head. And if not, then you're gonna have to buy some new ones because there's nothing else we can do. Okay, so we have our print head here. We have our flashlight ready uh, with just a little band of light. And so you take the print head here, wherever it is. And you take your flashlight and just take that little slither of light and place it, if I can get the camera focused here, on top of the print head. And you can move it around a little bit at a time until you see, a slither of light, kind of like, if I can get the camera to focus. And that right there is what we're looking for. This is actually the yellow side, as you can see it's yellow. The light is shooting down through the print head and is illuminating the inside of the print head just like that in a, in a line. And I can see from this point that there may be some more ink stuck in there. There should be one solid line of light. It doesn't appear to be. But we'll check it out even closer with our, um, our lens, which is what the lens is for. We're going to get... 10 times magnification down there to see if it is clogged or if it just looks like that's clogged. Slide off and actually taped the lens to the camera so you can see 
what I'm seeing. Uh, the trick is to get really, really close. You're almost touching it. And if you're doing this with your eye against the lens, you're almost going to have to touch it. Now we're getting there. Almost there. Okay. So right there is the line of jets. I'll have to draw an arrow on there. Right there. And there's the second line of jets right there. You got one, and you got two. Now with the light on it, I don't have the light on it right now, but with the light on it, in that single slit on the light, you'll be able to see inside the print head with this, this lens and see what's behind the jets. And sometimes, if you're really, really steady, you can see the jets themselves. They're like little itty bitty holes, which they are. So let's see if I can get a video of those. Okay, now that I have it focused on there, that yellow line towards the bottom there, if I move it without towards the middle now, that right there is where the ink comes out. So you want to move along this edge and see if there's anything stuck in there. Any dark spots like those two right there. Bet those are what's clogging the print head. The rest of it looks pretty good. Oh, there's another one. And there may be some bubbles and stuff that you see in there. Bubbles are fine. You're looking for dark spots. And now I lost my light, but... Uh. Sorry about the audio in the last part. I didn't realize I covered up the microphone with the tape taping on the lens. But with that, you can pretty much determine that this print head is indeed still clogged. And... More cleaning should cure this, or should fix this printhead. Um, I've heard that Windex can help clean it as well. I've never tried it. I do not know if it would work or not, or ruin it. But when reassembling this, basically it's just the reverse order. You put your stopper back on here if you had one. Flip it back over. Fill this up about halfway to three quarters full of the the correct ink color plop this puppy back on to here push it down really tight make sure you push it down really tight before you flip it over and put this piece back on because then your ink will go everywhere and you would have wasted it <coughs> push it down really good flip it over make sure your ball bearings which I took out right here are still in there and then put this piece back on and that just slides down on that groove right there and snaps in and with that that's how you uh, would examine your print head up close and personal you could also use the uh, the lens there to examine any of the connections up here coming around see if there's any breaks in the uh, the ribbon right there the uh, little copper ribbons that run the connection down to the actual print head to see if any of those are broken um, it's really nifty to to know specifically what's wrong because you could be just clean 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 forever and if it's not clogged if it's a mechanical issue then you'll never have it fixed it'll never cleaning it won't fix it but now that I know that this one's just clogged there's nothing mechanically wrong with it um, it's just a matter of getting all that stuff out of there with more cleaning and that's how you do that.